Hey pals, welcome to Frame and Fiber. I am Paige, your host, and I'm very happy that you are spending some time with me. I hope you are knitting or crocheting or making or just plain relaxing, but I'm glad you're here spending some time with me. So how are you? How was your 2020? <laughs> I know that's probably an extremely loaded question, right? But 2021 is upon us. I am filming this on December 31st. You're probably seeing this on January 1st or somewhere in there. So welcome to 2021, right? It's going to be good. I'm really praying for that. <laughs> uh, to start the new year. I am, along with a ton of other makers, hosting a make-along, which this is the third year in a row. It is called the New To You Make-Along. The main hosts are Liz and Leanne, who are sisters, who have a channel here on YouTube called Cocktail at the Hour. Cocktail Hour at the Coop. So they came up with this brilliant plan, and we've done it three years in a row. So if you haven't before and would like to join us. The new to you make along is pretty open. Basically from January 1st to February 14th, we are encouraging each other to make something new or at least try something new. So maybe it's just in your knitting, but you want to try a new cast on. Nope. Yeah. Cast on. Like maybe you've never done a provisional cast on, or maybe you've never crocheted and you want to try that. Who knows, whatever it is. And it's open up to anything. So try something new and join us. The way you enter is to just take a picture of the said technique or craft and just post it on Instagram using the hashtag new to you make along. Nope, sorry, new to you M A L 2021. And there, uh, that hashtag, there'll be all kinds of cool things to go see. Definitely check it out and see what everyone else is trying for the new year. But also that's where the prizes will be drawn from. So Liz and Leanne will be drawing the grand prize winner. The grand prize wins a, or the grand prize winner will win a ton of prizes. Uh, basically all of us hosts, which I'm going to put here, we all donate a prize to go to the grand prize winner. So that's a lot. And then each of us will pick one or two on our own. So there's lots of prizes in this one. And I feel like we all love sending prizes out there. So this is a just fun way to celebrate the beginning of the new year and trying something new. So I haven't exactly, I really need to get on this because it's tomorrow. I haven't narrowed down what I feel like doing. Well, that's not true. I guess I have narrowed it down because let me kind of talk about my other make along and then I'll talk about the projects I'm thinking about. The other make along that I'm hosting is called the Making Mag Mal. It's a make along running now through April 23rd. The, the way to enter is to just make something from one of the making magazines. There are 10 issues out there in the world. A lot of the patterns and projects are now available for individual sale on Ravelry, so you don't necessarily have to have the entire magazine to enter. However, if you've ever thought about buying a making magazine in the past, I would definitely recommend buying one because they're beautiful, they're inspirational. To me, they're more like books rather than magazines. Uh, the newest one is this one. It's issue 10 called Intricate, and I have already made something out of this book. Uh, I started the Making Mag Mal back in October, kind of dropped the ball on it because I um, had a few things in my life personally that I stepped away from social media for quite some time. I just couldn't get my head, I just, I didn't have the headspace for much more than what I was dealing with at the time. So. A slow start as far as getting the word out there about this make along, but I shall persevere <laughs> and I hope you guys will join me. Uh, I do sell the making magazine in my shop. So if you are interested in seeing which back issues, I have this issue 
but then I also have some back issues available. Uh, so if you would like to go check them out, uh, my Etsy shop is listed below. So yeah, so the reason why I'm saying I wanted to mention to you about the Making Mag Mal uh, and the new team make along is because I've kind of tied them together in my own making. I mean, right? <laughs> if you're gonna do a make along and you're gonna do more than one, double dip, definitely. So I'm double dipping because I think I'm going to make out of Intricate, I think I'm going to make Susan B. Anderson's Owls. So I've never knitted a stuffy. They're called Love Owls, that's so cute. I've never knitted a stuffy. I've crocheted a stuffy, is she here? Oh yeah, I've made a couple dolls. Um, I made this doll. Pardon me, sorry if I'm, oh, oh. Sorry, I have no idea what you just saw there. I'll see it in editing. So I made her. Her name is Cinnamon, but she's crocheted. So I've never made, she's so cute. I still never make clothes for her either. <laughs> she's in her skivvies. Uh, so I've never knitted a stuffy. And I think these look really cute. And there's a little bit of embroidery on top too on this one. So I think on both of them actually. Anyway, I just think these would be really cute. I'm sure I can find some scrap yarn to make these. So I think that's going to be my new to you make along entry and my second making magazine entry. Yeah. So that's that. That's what my new to you. That's, I just decided I was in between, um, trying to embroider some of the little drawings that I do, uh, for my new to you, my new to you project. But no, I think I'm going to knit a stuffy. So maybe I will pick my yarn and cast that on this week. Yeah, so are you gonna join us? Are you gonna join us for the, for the, for, join me anyway for my making mag and then join all of us for the new to you make along. Do you have any ideas what you're gonna work on? I would love to hear it. Comment below. My voice just went so high. <laughs> so, oh, I just caught myself on the viewfinder and I realized I always forget to tell you guys what I'm wearing. Okay, so this is called Frozen Silver, the Frozen Silver Cowl, uh, designed by Suvi Simola. And my friend, Lee Gifford, hi Mrs. Gifford, she knitted this for the shop. So I sent her this skein of Malabrico sock in the colorway, oh gosh, Impressionist Sky. And she knit up this beautiful sample. I think this is just a fun sampler, right? Like, tell me that doesn't look so fun to knit. And then she sent it back to me. So thank you, Lee. Yes, I'm wearing it in my house, which means I still have the tag. So I, I put tags on all the samples at the shop. <laughs> but if I get chilly at the shop or something looks cute with an outfit I'm wearing, sometimes it ends up coming home and then I have to bring it back and <laughs> all that kinds of silliness. Uh, so yeah, that's what I'm wearing. It is cozy. It takes one skein of Malabrigo sock or a fingering weight yarn in general. So what is that? Like 460 yards thereabouts, 400 yards. So I think this would be a good one uh, for you to stash dive. Of course I have Malabrigo, shop, Malabrigo sock in my shop on Etsy. You can check that out. I can't make eye contact with you guys when I'm plugging my shop. Have you noticed that? <laughs> okay. Next. What are we going to talk about next? Shall I show you my one whip? I only have one whip for you. I have some future whips to talk about, but... And I have some finished objects. Okay, so... I gave to my Aunt Amy a hat that I made. And I can't remember for the life of me what pattern it was. And it was a skein of yarn that I had received from Legacy Fiber Arts a couple years ago when I helped out at Needles Up. It was a like one of a kind colorway. So yeah, I made it for my aunt and I can't remember 
So why am I telling you this? All oh, right, because this whip is also for my same aunt. <laughs> so these socks right here, which this looks like I have a finished object, but I don't because I didn't cut in the heel yet. So I am loving knitting on this project. This is the skein of yarn. So this is the yarn. Oh my gosh, isn't it so pretty? I didn't work on this, or I didn't use this yarn for at least three years because I just thought it was so pretty in the ball that I didn't want to use it. <laughs> I, just, I just loved looking at it. So this is a rare self-striped, self-striping skein of yarn from Sweet Sparrow. Julie dyed these up a few years ago and it was one of those colorways. You know how sometimes the color and the name just hit you? This is called Ice Cream Shop. I think it's the most perfect color combination with that name. Like she really nailed the colors. You know, she's got little chocolate chips in with the mint and she's got some strawberry chunks in the strawberry. It's just like the cutest, absolute cutest. And so I didn't use this for a really long time. <sighs> but I've been stash diving, which I'm sure a lot of you guys have too, right? Since we're home a lot in during this pandemic that we are using what we have, right? And so I decided, okay, now's the time. I need to do some jolly, happy knitting. And this fit the bill. Okay, so let me tell you what I'm doing. There's no pattern here. This is my version of vanilla sock knitting. I do not like plain old stockinette around and around. I get kind of, I don't know, I get bored with it. So I need to do a little bit more. And I like the way a ribbed sock fits my leg. So let me show you. Okay, so it is a seven by one rib. This is the striping sequence right there on the toe. I slipped the color change. So I slipped every other stitch on the color change and it just made for just a pretty little pattern. It kind of broke up, not broke up, but it, I don't know. It made the, the, uh, the stripe feel a little bit softer. So, you know, because it's ice cream and they're melting into each other. I am such a geek. <laughs> uh, so 64 stitch cast on, one by seven rib, two by two ribbed cuff. That is about, usually it's two and a half inches, but I think this is closer to like two, two and a quarter because I did, um, two repeats of the stripes as the cuff. I'm going to cut in a heel. I decided to do, it's a wedge toe. Is that what it's called? When you just do straight? Yeah, it's a wedge toe. It's more of a, a square square. No wedge. That's the word. Uh, but I did the, um, I decided to do the two stitches in between the decreases. I really think I like the way that looks. Yeah, I think I really like the way that looks. So I think my Auntie Amy will love this. So yeah, this is for her. So she got half for Christmas and her birthday is in February. So this will be her birthday present. I'm pretty much halfway through second sock and then I will cut the heels in at the same time. I love an afterthought heel for striped socks. I love that you um, don't break up the, the striping pattern. I love the way that if you decide to use the same yarn for the heel, I like the way it looks like a bullseye. Actually, my camera right now is sitting on top of my sock box, my box of socks. Oh, which only has three pairs in it because I really need to wash my socks. <laughs> <laughs> but I striped, this is a pair that I did a while back. This was a three by one rib. Three by one, four by one, three by one. But the heel 
kind of does that like fun bullseye type of a foot. <laughs> I like the way that looks. So I will probably use this yarn for the heels as well. So that might either be a finished object next time I see you, or it might be gifted, but at least I got to show them to you. Oh no, come back, come back, come back. One more thing. This is my first time using a nine inch circular needle. I like them. They definitely, you know how when you're making a hat, it's just so fun to go round, 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 round on that 16 inch needle. So I definitely like that aspect of a nine inch needle. It is a little bit, um, my hands are a little bit, not cramped, because I'm not uncomfortable and there's no pain involved. But it is a different, you have to hold it differently, right? You have to, it just feels, it's, uh, it's a little bit alien in my hand. That said, I have no problem with the nine inch and I think I will definitely continue with them. I will say too that this is a number, a US one. So what is that, a 2.25 millimeter or two and a half millimeter? I've always knitted, when I first started knitting socks, I started with a one because that's what a pattern called for. And then I realized I had to go down to a double zero because I was so loose and I wasn't getting a nice gauge. Like some of my socks in the box that I have, they are older and they're a lot more open. So I don't generally wear them in the winter. They're more like shoulder season socks. <laughs> I cracked myself up. So my gauge, I'm still getting a really nice tight fabric. So I'm super happy that my gauge has kind of cinched up a little bit. I feel like I'm growing up as a knitter. <laughs> I feel like I've graduated. So that's kind of cool. Now I don't know, and that was before I did the nine. So the last couple pairs I've, I'm using ones now. Um, so the nine is great. The nine inch is great. The only thing I still love my double pointed and my magic loop because if you're using one of those two methods, you don't have to switch when you get to the toe or the heel. You can just continue using whatever it is you're using where this, once I get past, you know, maybe when I've decreased about a quarter of the stitches off, I really need to switch over to my DPNs. So the downside is having to plan ahead. <laughs> 2021 goals plan ahead okay that's it I'm liking my nine inch circulars okay on to fin finished objects finished objects also hark back to the make-alongs and will bring me into my future makes which also hit into the make-alongs so the first one is a beautiful hat which I feel like I should give this away too because how many hats can one girl keep right oh do you see how cute it is though <laughs> okay so this is the merge hat by Emily Green and basically it's a ribbed hat that the ribbing just travels from side to side. So the ribbing, right? Because it's a ribbed hat, it fits very well. I can make a size medium adult hat and wear it. Usually I make an a medium adult hat, which you'll see with my next one. And then I realize it's gonna be, I put it on my head and it's too big for me. And so then I have to redo it and go down because I have a pea head and I'm really a small adult or a large child. <laughs> and so I should probably make them because even this is like, I mean, it's fine. I don't mind this little point there. In fact, when this gets pointy, I think it's the cutest thing on the planet. I feel like a little elf. So, ooh, vultures outside. Um, so look at the colors in this skein this is chelsea lux dk 
and it is in her boardwalk colorway. Originally I thought that the speckling in this yarn was not going to work with the pattern, but it's a light enough colorway and once it's on your head and it spreads you can really see it so I am very pleased with this hat and I think it would be a lovely gift because I think it's going to fit whoever I give it to really well um this pattern is out of the making magazine and this is my first entry into the making mag mel it is shall I show it to you I'll show you where is she? Emily Green, where are you? Here you are. Okay. So that's it in a solid. And it's just so pretty. I love it so much in the solid that I do want to cast another one on. So that will be a future make. I will be casting it on in this beautiful brown from Quince & Co. I skeined this up. And I don't know why I skeined it up, but it was here. And it, this is brand new to the shop. This is oh, Quince & Co. Phoebe, which is 100% extra fine American Merino. You can find this on my Etsy shop. In my Etsy shop. I, I skeined it up. Can't remember why. I think maybe I was going to swatch for a sweater. But I haven't really... There's no sweater that's kicking around really that I would want this color for. So yeah, this pretty brown I think would be a lovely hat in that pattern. So that's going to be my new cast on for another merge hat. And I think, so this one I might give away, although I do love the way it looks on. Oh my gosh. I don't know if Christina still has this colorway available, especially because Boardwalk kind of feels like, um, I mean, it is more a summer, right, name than a wintertime one, but it's so pretty, and I would imagine she makes this in the summer, so go check out Chelsea Yarns, and go check out Frame and Fiber on Etsy for Phoebe. This stuff is squishy, man. <laughs> so that's going to be, oh wait, anything else do I need to say about this? It took like five seconds to make. Oh why don't I make all of the hats they take five seconds I think my last finished object was a fingering weight sweater and I do want to say that one of my goals for 2021 is to have I want to have two I would love to say three sweaters made in 2021 but I'm gonna say two and hope for the third plan for two hope for the third but my goal really is no more fingering weight projects in 2021. I do way too many fingering weight projects that take me forever. I'm a slow knitter. Yeah, obviously I need fingering weight for some socks. I might need some fingering weight for a shawl here or there, but otherwise no fingering weight sweaters for 2021. That's my goal. Okay, so more hats I think would be appropriate for 21 21 next finished object is another hat and this one is for me I'm definitely going to keep this one let's put it on and I'm going to keep this one because although the other green one fits me I definitely think it would fit anyone with an average size head where this one's a little small so I don't think I can give this away unless there's someone in my life who has a pea head as well. My dad has a pea head but I don't think he would like this hat. <laughs> Alright so can I get here for you? I can't tell if you can see. I should have like a, a hat blocker so I can show them to you. This is called Peace Lily and it is designed by Wait, I wrote it down. Um, I designed, I did not design it. Uh, designed by Katrine Schubert, Peace Lily. She just, uh, this is a brand new pattern, I think released either November or December. 
and again super quick super pretty I did have to make this twice because the first one I made it and it was too big for my head I could have given it away but I didn't want to give this yarn away because this I um, I bought specifically as a prize uh, at Rhinebeck in 2019 I was with Allison of Daisy Lane Design and Denise who is Earth Tones girl we were together uh, at the Wing and a Prayer booth at Rhinebeck and we all decided to buy the same yarn and do a project together. So this is Wing and a Prayer yarn and it is her Erin Waite Three Ply Shetland. And this, her yarn, like I don't know who spins her yarn, but I love the texture of it. I love however it's spun like sometimes my forehead gets a little bit um, sensitive to wool hats this one I've worn every day <laughs> every day and I have no irritation so her yarns are beautiful look how pretty that is in the light so this is a fun again just like the merge hat this is just alternating moving your ribs so when I redid this, okay, let me show you. So when you wear it, right, you can see, well, let me take it off. Holy mackerel, spaz. You can see that the brim is kind of wavy. And so when you wear it, it's a little wavy. So when I did it the second time, I did a row, an inch of just straight ribbing. The pattern calls for you to start the pattern right off the, the, right off the bat on the brim because the whole thing is ribbed as well. I thought, so when I redid it, I was like, oh, let me see if I can make it not be so wavy, but it still made it wavy. And why did I want to not have it be wavy? Because Paul Miller was mocking me when I wore it like this which you can't really see maybe I, so I did change it it's not as wonk it's not as as wonky but Paul Miller says because of the way this comes down and then around he says it looks like I'm wearing a medieval helmet <laughs> I think that might be the name of this episode medieval helmet hats medieval helmet head <laughs> so I just make sure that this is not in the middle of my forehead and actually, I do like the way that fits better. So check out this pattern. Like I said, it is called Peace Lily by, I'm looking down there because I totally forgot, Katrine Schubert. <laughs> it's beautiful. I definitely will make another one of these for sure. Um, and I probably will just follow the pattern the way she, and just let it be a little bit bigger so I can gift it. So, oh, my nose is itchy now. Um, I have this much yarn left over. And I have some yarn from Liverpool Yarns, which is, a, I think, that, I don't know if they're a farm. I should be, I should strike that and not say that they're a farm. They are a yarn company from Pennsylvania who I believe sources all of their Shetland from Pennsylvania farms. I'm getting the gist of what they do. I might have tweaked it a little bit and maybe it's more like American wool, but either way, um, I have a cream color. That's a little, that's very similar in, in weight. And so what I think I'm going to do is for my making mag, Mal, I'm going to cast on the Hayward mitts. No, are they called the Hayward mitts? No, Hudson mitts by Whitney Hayward, which is in Making Magazine number five, Color. I can't show it to you because I left that at the shop. Uh, you can That's available on Ravelry for sure, but the texture of those mitts really look, I think would look really nice with this hat. So I'm gonna cast them on with this. The mitts call for a worsted weight yarn. This is an Aran weight, but I think I can make it work just be a little bit tighter ah <sighs> yeah so I'm gonna use that up and I think that'll be really cute to have mitts match this hat so that'll be for me yay okay 
fix the hair. Oh, and if you're wondering why my hair is straight, so usually my hair is super curly or super frizzy, depending on what I do to it <laughs> or not do to it. Paul Miller and I are going to watch a movie tonight. And when I straighten my hair, I love it. I straighten my hair and then he'll play with my hair the whole time I'm watching TV with him. <laughs> if it's curly, it means there's like not some product and so he can't touch it or it looks good and I'm like, don't touch my hair, you're gonna make it frizzy. So when it's straight like this, don't tell him I said that though. I literally straightened my hair this morning just because I know we're watching a movie tonight. <laughs> So he will play with my hair. <laughs> yes, it's true. If you see me with straight hair, chances are I'm trying to get Paul Miller to play with it. <laughs> I didn't take a sip of my coffee. Hold on. Okay. So those are the hats. I have one more hat that I want to make. It's funny. I'm, I'm, I'm totally hat crazed right now. So new to the frame shop, I say the frame shop, new to frame and fiber. I refer to it only as a frame shop because it's been a frame shop for 30 years. And so <laughs> I've been saying frame shop for a very long time. So it's hard to not. So frame and fiber, new to frame and fiber is weekend wool from Green Mountain Spinnery. Very pretty. Similar in texture and um, spin to what I just showed you of the Wing and a Prayer. Maybe they spin hers for her. I have no idea where. They're both in Vermont, right? So Green Mountain Spinnery is in Vermont and so is uh, Wing and a Prayer. So I don't know. Maybe she gets it spun at Green Mountain Spinnery. That would be fun. Anyway, this is their weekend wool in the colorway Natural Gray. This is 100% American wool, uh, yeah, all sourced in the United States. It's lovely. I've worked with and have in the shop their Cotton Comfort line, which is 80% American wool and 20% cotton. Yes, you can find these on my Etsy shop, in my Etsy shop. <laughs> Although, right now, some of the colors are not listed because my order, they were out of stock on a lot of the colors that I ordered, so... Hopefully I will get the rest of them soon. But anyway, so that is my Green Mountain Spinnery. I want to make the Glenn Fittich hat, which is a beautiful cabled hat by Thea Coleman. And then I was thinking it would be fun if I got a bottle of Glenn Fittich and every time I worked on this, I could have a glass of scotch. Of course, then that means maybe I would mess the hat up. Maybe not. I don't know. So there you have it. And I feel like, I don't know when the Glenn Fittich hat was released, but she used Green Mountain Spinnery for it. So maybe 2017, 2018, 2019, somewhere in there. So that's a future make. I think that's it. Oh no, there was one more thing I wanted to talk to you guys about. Yesterday morning, I saw on Instagram that Ellie um, of Skein Deer Knits her Selbu cowl that was published in, I forget, a book or a magazine last year is now available for individual purchase on Ravelry. And it's a beautiful color work cowl. It's lovely. And so I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm going to, I'm going to make that and I'm going to make it. I got all excited because reading about it, she used yarn that I bought when I was in Norway, um, Hillesvag. Hillesvag yarn. So this is the sole, which is a fingering weight yarn, two ply. But then I came home and saw my colors and I don't know if these would be the best because it's, oh, I'm sorry. It's a two color pattern. It's in the Selbu style. And so I don't know if I have enough contrast here. Um, I don't think that's enough contrast. Maybe these two, but I don't know. We'll see. It would be fun to do these three together in a project. That's the whole reason why I bought them. I thought these would be great for color work with, um, like a plain, like either light gray or cream colored body 
for a sweater. I'm gonna sneeze. Okay. <laughs> Uh, but I'm not allowed to make a fingering weight sweater this year so this is going to end up being something else so I don't know why am I telling you all this because I want you to go look at and see the cowl that Ellie designed and we went all over it the way I did and I wanted to show you this yarn thinking I was going to make that but just now when I was prepping to talk to you I realized that these colors probably wouldn't work so I think instead of doing the cowl and instead of saving this for a sweater, I think I might look into using these for a shawl that I can work on in 2021. My friend Patricia, who lives in Norway, who was with me when I bought this yarn, she has some beautiful patterns that she released in 2020 all about the forest path. And I feel like there were four shawls in that collection. I did one of them. So I think I want to go look and take a look and see what she's got going on. But then I saw, okay, I've never done a Stephen West shawl. So that would be kind of fun. So I think I might use these for a shawl instead of um, a sweater and instead of the cowl. And I have three colors and I'd rather keep them all together. So if you guys have any suggestions on what I can do with my most beautiful Hillis Fog yarn, which let's see if I can get its fingering weight beautifulness, a shawl. Let me know if you have any suggestions. I would love to know. Oh, so itchy. All right, friends. So that's that. That is what I've been up to. I would love to hear what you're up to. I would love to hear your plans for 2021. For sure, like, let me know. And join, join the make-alongs. It would be great to have you with us. That's about it. I'm taking the next few days off from the shop. If I do, it might just be to, like, ship out some Etsy orders and let a customer or two come in and pick up their picture framing. Picture framing was super busy this year. Uh, I don't know if it's because people are stuck home, so they're looking at their walls and they want to change up what they've got going on, but I am really thankful that so many people got custom framing done because at the beginning of this pandemic, I was a little bit afraid that my business would not exist in 2021. So thank you guys for supporting. Thank you for shopping my Etsy store. To all of you people in the community, when I say community, I mean this fiber world of ours, the amount of picture framing that you guys sent my way blew my mind. In fact, when I start up doing the books for the end of year, I want to look to see what percentage of the business came from people outside of New Jersey, specifically for picture framing, because you guys really blew my mind. Um, people who, I mean, I know a lot of you, but so many people also sent me things that I didn't know. So that was really great. Like I had one woman send me something because someone she's friends with is part of my little community here. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Uh, I'm going to show you some of the things that I framed for Christmas this year. Uh, let me insert them here. A couple of these pieces were done uh, by sons for their moms, which I thought were just such thoughtful and caring gifts, like just blew my, like melted my heart. Uh, there was a couple gifts in there for significant others. I had one friend send me something. He, not for himself, but for his partner who is in our community, who is the knitter. He does, he's not a fiber artist, but he sent uh, a picture or a magazine with a knitting monkey that I got to frame for Jason. It was so cool. So yeah, so I'm gonna probably throw in here too some pictures of pieces just that I did throughout the 2020 that I did take pictures of that I was extremely thankful, gr grateful, and proud to have been part of the projects. I think that's part of why I like picture framing so much too, is it, it is a, co a collaboration. As much as I'm the one doing the actual work, I'm helping 
someone realize a vision in their head, especially when it's a gift like that. Um, I think it's super fun to be a part of that. I also think it's fun for me when someone does come into the shop or if I have a meeting with them on Zoom and they're framing it for their house and they're just framing it for a space on the wall. They didn't have much emotional, um, they didn't have an emotional attachment to it. Uh, once they've gone through the process of picking out the pictures or the components of the picture frame and they see the end result, I feel like they instantly love it and they're, it, I help them build a connection to the piece that they're hanging in their house. So that's pretty special, right? I think so. <laughs> so yes, that is what's happening at the shop. That's what's happening with me. I hope you guys are well. Reach out to me if there's anything I can help you with as far as picture framing or knitting. If there's any supplies that you don't see in my shop, hit me up with a message and we can get that for you. All right, I'm going to leave it here because I'm on vacation, staycation. So I am going to go get cozy up and I think I'm going to wind this into a ball and start that. Oh no, maybe I'll start my merge hat. <laughs> we'll see, I'll do something. I, again, thank you for being here and uh, yeah, see you next time. Bye.